When it's your first cruise, you definitely want it to go off without a hitch and make sure everything goes smoothly. So today, I have the most important things that I think rookie cruisers should do for the Royal Caribbean Cruise up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RealCaribbeanBlog.com. Cruising is easy, but you know what? It always seems that way after you've done a number of them. For people that are brand new to cruising, you don't know what you don't know, and there are definitely some important things to do and not to do. And my goal here is to help you make sure you have an awesome first cruise. I really thought about it because what are the most important things that a first time cruiser should do for their sailing? There's a lot of things you could do. We could probably come up with a list of 50 or 100, but I wanted to whittle it down to the top 10. Starting with number one, arrive at your departure port a day ahead of schedule. This might be the biggest mistake I see cruisers making because it has the most potential to ruin your entire vacation. So when you book a cruise, whatever day it is set to depart, a lot of people will book a flight to get in the same day. It makes sense because if you're going to Walt Disney World or Las Vegas, you fly in the same day your first night that you're staying there. That makes sense on land, but on a cruise, that's a big problem. On land, if your flight is delayed or canceled, you're disappointed, but you know what? The hotel will still take you the next day. On a cruise ship, that is not the case. You need to make sure that travel delays do not impact your ability to make the cruise because not only will the ship leave without you, you're not gonna get a refund for missing the cruise. So you wanna make very sure you get there. Instead, you wanna fly in at least one day ahead of time. That way, if there's a travel delay or cancellation, you're able to still make that cruise. Heck, the best benefit of it is you can start your vacation a little bit early because by flying in a day early or two, you're gonna extend your vacation, get a chance to explore the city you're departing from. There's some really cool advantages to that, plus you're protecting yourself against missing the cruise. Number two, bring your own drinks on board your ship. You might not know that Royal Caribbean actually allows you to bring certain beverages on board, and this can save you a ton of money. Royal Caribbean allows you to bring one bottle per adult of champagne or wine in the cabin on embarkation day, plus up to a dozen standard cans bottles or cartons of non-alcoholic drinks. This means that you can bring these things on board legally and have no problems with using them on board and save money on drinks you would have consumed otherwise. This is really popular for bringing sodas and of course your own wine, because of course if you purchase them on board, there's gonna be a markup. Now to be crystal clear, Royal Caribbean does have a corkage fee if you wanna bring your own wine on board and open it in a restaurant, but I'll be perfectly honest with you, it's rare they enforce the rule, but it could technically exist. Nonetheless, by paying retail for the wine back at home, I'm almost certain you're still going to save money even with that corkage fee. And before you ask me down in the comments below, no, you cannot bring beer or liquor on board. That is not allowed, so you'll have to leave that at home. The third thing every rookie cruiser should do on Royal Caribbean is research their ports in advance. Unlike a vacation to the beach where you just show up in a cruise, it's a lot different and it's your advantage to really make sure you research ahead of time to understand what you can do and not waste time or money or both while you're there. You only have a few hours in each of the ports that you're visiting, so it's critical to make sure you have the right plan in place to make sure you're not missing out on it because after all, the ports you visit are a major part of the experience. Once you know which ports you're going to in your cruise, research them and get an idea of things that you can do and things that might be interesting to you, whether it's a shore excursion through the cruise line that you book or something on your own, there's a lot of cool things you can consider and there are pros and cons to everything, but have a plan, have something booked. Don't try to wing it or simply show up to the ports. That is a big mistake. Next on my list is sign up for activities in advance or as soon as you get on board the ship. Now, depending on which Royal Caribbean ship you're going on, you may have the ability to pre-book certain bits of entertainment or activities before your cruise. If that is the case, then you definitely want to take advantage of it. To check, it's really easy. Just go into the Royal Caribbean app, or better yet, the Cruise Planner website on Royal Caribbean's website. Go there, see which activities and entertainment are available to reserve before the cruise. In a lot of cases, the shows, especially which have no cost to book, will book up very, very quickly. So you definitely want to look up which shows are available, and if they're available, book it there. Now, if you don't have the ability to book your shows in advance, or there's nothing that you see on there, when you go to check, that's okay too. When you get on board the cruise ship, connect to the Royal Caribbean Wi-Fi, open the Royal Caribbean app, and see if there are any activities available then. Things like laser tag and other activities may show up later on to book 
through the app, but you wouldn't be able to book it before the cruise. If all else fails, if just uh, you watch this video day before the cruise and oops, you miss out on all of it, there will be an ability for you to get to a standby line in order to wait there. And in most cases, especially for the shows, the standby line usually works out. Just make sure you get into the standby line about 15 or 20 minutes before the posted show time. My next tip is to make sure your phone is in airplane mode because some of the biggest horror stories that are out there are people that kept their phone on like normal when they went on a cruise, came home and had a giant bill. This can happen when you leave your phone turned on and the cell signal is going and you're out roaming because even international cell phone plans do not cover cruise ships. So what you wanna do instead is when you get on board your cruise ship, put your phone into airplane mode. Don't worry, you can still use the Wi-Fi on your phone to connect to the ship's Wi-Fi and use everything that's there, but make very certain that you turn off the cell connection and the easiest way is to put your phone into airplane mode. Now, some phone companies do have cruise specific plans that you can buy in advance. I know AT&T is one of them, but I will tell you it's a big mistake also because they're super expensive and perform very poorly. Instead, if you do want to stay in contact with friends and family, buy a Wi-Fi package and use Wi-Fi calling. Make sure you set up Wi-Fi calling before you get on board the ship. You can do that actually right now while at home. Wi-Fi calling should be free with almost any carrier out there and you can test it at home to make sure that it works. That way when you get on board the ship, your cell connection will be off, but your Wi-Fi connection will be on and Wi-Fi calling will still work. If you've watched a number of my videos and you probably aren't surprised that my next tip is to use a travel agent to book your cruise. There's a lot of complexity with booking a cruise and there's a lot of decisions to make during the booking process. So it is my recommendation that you use a good travel agent who specializes in cruises to help you plan all around it. A good travel agent will make sure that you're covering all your bases and ensuring that you pick the right ship, the right room, the right deposit type, and of course the right fare that meets what you're looking for. Essentially, it's not about just booking a cruise. Anybody can actually book a sailing that's not very difficult. It's about what you don't know, special rates, the difference in the important cancellation policies related to if you book refundable or non-refundable policy, special rates that you just wouldn't know about unless you ask your travel agent and a variety of other topics. Travel agents are a great resource and best yet, a travel agent should cost you nothing extra because the cruise line is paying them a commission for it. Don't worry, it doesn't cost you anything more to use a travel agent. The fares are exactly the same, but in my opinion, everybody, whether you're brand new or not, should be using a good travel agent to book their cruises. The number seven thing on my list of things that everybody should do on Royal Caribbean as a rookie cruiser is to buy travel insurance. A while ago, maybe not that long ago, I would always say consider travel insurance. You know what? I'm going one step further, book travel insurance. Again, cruising is different than other types of vacation. When you break your ankle on land, okay, you can go to a local hospital or doctor or ER and they can take care of it and it's gonna be a reasonable cost because you're probably in network or at least it's you know gonna be reimbursed to you, but you're in at your home country, it works out a lot better. On a cruise ship, it's very different. And there's a lot of reasons why travel insurance covers scenarios that your medical insurance simply does not cover. Forget breaking a bone. What if you have to cancel your cruise because of a sudden onset of illness or you get laid off from your job or a family member is sick? These are reasons that you would need to cancel your cruise at the very last minute. And without travel insurance, you're not getting any money back from the cruise line. So again, it's a good safety net to have. And more importantly, it's really not that expensive when you look at the different travel insurance providers that are out there and the policies available. In short, like all insurance out there, it's a whole waste of money until you actually need the policy and then it's the best thing ever. When it comes to travel insurance, when it comes to cruising, I find that so many first time cruisers skip travel insurance. And unfortunately, too many rookie cruisers end up regretting not getting travel insurance because it ends up coming out of their bottom line. Next on my list is to bring extra toiletries. Kind of like travel insurance, it's just a good idea to have the right things with you just in case you'll need it. Of course, you can still buy things like sunscreen or aspirin or band-aids on a cruise ship, but of course, they're gonna charge you an arm and a leg for it compared to what you could probably get from your local pharmacy. It's also just a good idea to have these items and other things you might need, no one really wants to talk about, but how about, you know, in case you have diarrhea or if you get seasick or if you have a cough that develops, it's a really good idea to have cold medicine, seasickness pills, and a couple other over-the-counter pills and medicine that you can just have on hand just in case. Not only can you use these items, of course, on land when you get back home, but many of these really don't expire for many years, so you can use them on subsequent cruises, even if you don't use it on your very first sailing. Number nine is look at a deck plan before you pick a room. 
So when you pick your stateroom, it's a really good idea to look at what's above and below your cabin. So when you look at a deck plan, and there are deck plans on Royal Queen's website, it's pretty easy. Just Google, in fact, you know, Oasis of the Seas, Deck 8, Deck Plan, and bam, you'll find it there. And then when you're looking for your cabin that you want to book, before you book your cabin, look at what is one deck above and one deck below your cabin. As long as it's another stateroom, you're totally cool. What you want to avoid is booking a cabin that is directly above or below a public venue, like a pool or a restaurant or a hallway or something like that. What you really want to have is other staterooms to avoid noise bleed. Unfortunately, sometimes, especially on older ships, noise bleed can be an issue where people are dragging chairs around and creating noise in public venues or there's music blasting, whatever the case may be. But that noise bleeds into your room and if you want to go to sleep at a normal time or sleep in for that matter, it's really important for you to have a cabin that has other cabins above and below you. And by the way, speaking of picking a cabin, I really do think every rookie cruiser should avoid the temptation to book a guarantee cabin. Look, I get it. You can save some money. It's really nice. But guarantee cabins, while they do offer you the option for a cheaper cabin, you're playing roulette with where your location is. And more often than not, it's usually not in a great space. It's almost always all the way forward or all the way back, or it is above or below a public venue. So take it from me, book a specific room, and before you book it, make sure there are other cabins above and below you. And the last thing every rookie cruiser should do before the Royal Caribbean cruise is to download the app. Royal Caribbean's app went from like something cool or neat to have to an essential when it comes to planning your cruise. Not only is it useful before your cruise, but it is critical once on board the ship because it provides a lot of features, especially on some of Royal Caribbean's newest ships. You'll not only be able to check out the activities, you can book excursions, dining, get notifications of changes, view your bill, heck, even open your stateroom or control the blinds, some of the more newer ships that are out there. It's really incredible. But most importantly, downloading it ahead of time will make sure you're not wasting time downloading it on board the ship. Well, you technically could do that. It's slow, it's cumbersome, and just waste your time. Do it now have it all set up to go, it really makes the entire process super easy, especially check-in, because that is where the app really shines from being able to scan your CPASS card, take photos for you to check in. It makes the terminal process when you get there, super simple, and you'll get on board that ship way faster if you have the Royal Caribbean app installed and everything set up in terms of your check-in process. So there you have it, the 10 things that every rookie cruiser should do to ensure they have a great first Royal Caribbean cruise. There's much more than that. Don't assume this is the end-all be-all, but I thought this were the most important 10, but let me know in the comments below. Is there something that I missed that should be in the top 10 list, or do we need to expand this to like 30 or so in order to make sure we cover all our bases? There's always more things you can do, but I think these are the most important things rookie cruisers should do before every cruise they take. While you're down below our video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube wants you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.